the <laughs> pathetic moderns and their spiritual emptiness. And I find this just remarkable because what have they got to say that even intersects with what we've been talking about? Like, in what way can, like, Owen Jones... I mean, even Owen Jones has to use the word magic. You know, he's, mm. a, he's a man who is a pure materialist, completely fixated on the sort of French Revolution rights of man. And in any other time or place, he's got nothing to say about any of this. Like, none of them. What are they going to say? What are they going to say that even vaguely interacts with the concepts that are at play and are clearly animating the country at the moment? Absolutely nothing, right? It's coming against everything he's been talking about for, for a long time. John makes a good point, actually. Um, this, this kind of magical thinking is completely normal outside of the West. Uh, you know, the, the national mourning in ancient China lasts for years. People, have, you know, the moderns have no idea. Mm. And he's exactly right. Like, they, we just assume everyone is an Enlightenment rationalist. And the thing is, there are good reasons to look at that and go, hang on a second, maybe this kind of magical thinking, maybe there is something about it that is actually worth keeping. And the reason I say this is because I've been doing this repeated series called Our Cyberpunk Dystopia. I did part three the other day. And it's just the horrific world we move into when we, re when we think that human beings are just measurable bags of meat. Mm. You know, that's, it's a genuinely terrifying future. Where like, okay, we'll just you know, give you a, a palm stamp where we'll, we'll just read all of your biometric data and then have you in a database and millions of people will just be numbers in a spreadsheet. What a terrible way of looking at the world. But that seems to be the alternative. We can have a country of magic and tradition, or we can have the cyberpunk dystopia. You know, you choose. And the, uh... They don't want the tradition because it's hard to change people if they know their history mm. because they belong to something. They mm. belong to a family. They belong to a nation, mm. which is just a bigger family. Mm. And if, if, if they can break that down, the left's really good at breaking down families oh, yeah. and breaking down you know, the, the monarchy. And it's because once you belong to nothing, we want to belong so then they can offer the solution of then you wanting to belong to something because we've got rid of what you used to belong to. Well, they can create the new man yes. beginning at year zero, <clears throat> the atomized individual who's year zero, outside yeah. of space and time who's you know self-generative he, yeah. you know, he's not created he's not you know part of a culture or a country yeah. or you know a, a tradition over time there's no future for yeah. him he's always in the now you don't have a history because yeah because it starts now exactly and you don't have a future because tomorrow is day one as well yeah and exactly and so like I, this i think is just exemplified by a bunch of woke leftists on twitter like this martin durkin guy who's just like what are we doing this is the 21st century. What the hell are we doing? And it's like, sorry, Martin, we're doing something important. I don't, have you not seen the building? The building's mm. ancient. You know, look at all those people there and they all know why they're there. And you're, you're the only one on the outside going, oh, I don't understand this at all. It's like, sorry, Martin, we're actually, what, what we're doing is making sure that people in the future won't be embarrassed of us. Like, I know that's hard to believe, but in the same way that I just covered, like, you know, you can go back to, like, King George or William Gladstone, you know, being... Th this is the same thing. You know, we're making sure that we did our part. And tradition is about passing on the lessons previous generations mm -hmm. learned the hard way. Yeah. That's yeah. what tradition's about, so you don't make the same mistakes. We may not understand, or he definitely doesn't understand why those mm -hmm. people are in that hall... But there's a reason. He just doesn't know the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's a great, that's very much Edmund Burke's view of tradition. Is that, look, actually a lot of good things are built up in the traditions. And even if you don't understand why these things work, and often because they're the work of so many minds, mm. of so many, so many hands, of so many generations, you couldn't plan it out. You couldn't even explain it. But the thing has a life of its own and, and provides benefits of its own. You know, and it's irresponsible not to pass that down. And the poor traditions or the things that added no value to society yeah. are discarded over time. Mm. Mm. That's exactly right. You know, the, the, they don't become traditions, <laughs> you know, that, that, that don't have any, any power. And that's the point, isn't it? Because this, this is what keeps everything together. You know, this is a genuine sort of spiritual locus of this country. And so Martin here being like, oh, I don't understand this. I was born yesterday. I've got no knowledge of the past. I, shut up, Martin. Anyway, so the New York Times had a nice uh, take on this, which is amazing. King Charles is out of, out of touch with the regular people. It's like, he's, he's a king. <laughs> like, 
I wouldn't expect him to know what the, the, the you know, the, I mean, a they they really do us down here. So, oh, the public's using food banks. So, well, a, a small portion of the public is using food banks. Hmm. Most people are not using food banks. Just so you know, uh, again, the British public is reliant on food banks. Thanks, New York Times, for making us sound like we're an impoverished third world hole. Um, but of course, King Charles is not, you know, again, but the, look at the look at the view. Well, your, your king doesn't know what it is to use a food bank. It's like, that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Mm. You know, wouldn't that be humiliating if your king had to go to a food bank? He's trained all his life for this role. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's been joking about how he's been waiting decades because yeah. Elizabeth lived to 96. But uh, but again, look, the perspective is very much like the French Revolution perspective. Well, why aren't we all equal? It's like, because we aren't equal no one's equal anywhere ever no and that's okay on on many many different levels exactly in you know, every conceivable yeah. way in fact. i'm not equal to a six foot six basketball player no you know i'm not equal to someone who's been to oxford university and had a private education no but you know some other ways i will be better than some of those people i've mentioned in other ways yeah. you've got different life experiences yes. just the way of the world but again like you know the the, the revolutionary in america can't understand what it is they're looking at you know it's like yeah but food banks like, what about food banks anyway so speaking of food banks in fact uh the, the i don't know is this normal for like everything to close on the day of the funeral of the monarch it probably is i think it would have been a hundred years ago yeah. but because we're in a society now that's 24 7 yeah we don't even respect sundays anymore no. or of anything no. that it seems a bit odd yeah no i i, I mean i'm actually not against this because I, I assumed that it was traditional although i couldn't find anything on it um but i assumed that this was something that was just done you know mm. probably done for king george or something and i think it's done for the people who work in those shops because yeah. rather than spending the day working bringing money into you know the capitalist system mm. those people can now be with their family and friends and contemplate the change yeah. that's happening in the country yeah, uh, John makes another good point. No, all the closures are voluntary as yep. well. No one's. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the lockdowns in a minute. In fact, but uh, but that put a pin in that as well. They're, 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 this is anti-capitalist, right? Mm. <laughs> this is very anti-capitalist. It's capitalist to have them open twenty four seven. You know, three hundred sixty five days a year. Uh, and so it's you know, it's interesting how again you see the magic of mm. the tradition imposing itself on modernity and saying actually no. You know, and again, it's all voluntary. You, know, you no can't be a capitalist without a secure, fantastic country above it. Yes. Because yeah. then there is no capitalism yeah, if you yeah. don't have that country. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, essentially everything's closing. Now, people have been asking, oh, well, are you guys going to be broadcasting on Monday, uh, which is the day of the funeral? Um, I think we will, but obviously we'll do something appropriately sensitive to the, the occasion and talk about that subject. Um, but uh, but it was very interesting just, again... Noah Robinson, just uh, Robson, just some modernist who's just like, I just, you know, everything's closing. I don't understand why. I mean, there are some odd ones. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the, the Met Office decided to stop giving regular weather forecasts. Uh, Norfolk City Council closed their cycle racks. <laughs> I mean, that's, mm. okay, doing me wrong. Bit odd. Well, some of it now has gone into the realm of virtue signaling, hasn't it? Yes. Yes, it has. Uh, CrossFit included a one-minute rest in silence and tribute workout. Centre Parks decided to kick all the guests out of a village. I mean, I don't think the Queen would have asked for that. Uh, Morrison's has turned off the beeps at its checkouts. So, come on, again, that's a bit silly. Yeah. Um, and uh, Wimbledon Food Bank has closed out of respect. I was like, possibly didn't need to do that either. But um, but like you're saying about the capitalism, though, right? And this I you would you would think if it was any other thing, any other day, somewhere like the Guardian would be like, yeah, it's great that these things. Uh, closing you know like it's an attack mm. on the capitalist system it gives the workers a day off mm. you know there those, are all, those poor workers yeah there are lots of left-wing yeah. reasons to say yeah no it'd, it'd be good to give them an extra bank holiday you know to, to get, get them off work until of course it's for the queen yeah. and then the guardian's like well hang on a second this is there's a recession coming don't you know it's i like, may run out of my soy milk <laughs> it's not even that actually they're like there's a recession threat that looms as the uk grinds to a halt to mourn the queen yeah. and it's like you guys love recessions yeah you guys love this you see this as a step towards the communist revolution don't give me this absolute bs like they, uh, they, listen to this right they now. don't want the workers sat at home with the tv on watching the funeral of the queen going do you know what 
on the part My of country's life. amazing. Yeah. Look at what we do. Exactly. The world's tuned in for this. The whole world exactly. is watching this. Yeah. Uh, that, that is honestly nail on the head there. If it was for anything else, like if you can go to the next one, you see the Guardian was completely pro lockdown. And yeah. they were like, yeah, the lockdowns are bad for you, but not to do it would have been worse. We don't care about the economy. We don't care yeah. about your mental health. You know, no, 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 no. Lock you down because that'll be good against capitalism. But as soon as, like you say, it would be a benefit to the traditional structures of this country, they're like, oh no, we've got to go to work. Get, get those workers out to work. You can't have a day off. Recession's coming, don't you know? It's a paid bank holiday. The <laughs> left should be celebrating another free day for workers to relax at home. No, no, you've got to go work, work for your capitalist masters, says the Guardian. Uh, it's it's dis honestly just transparently disgusting, and I can't stand it. Um, anyway, so moving on, we get a lot of uh, losers posting their L's online. Uh, roughly every six days in the world, a country celebrates its independence from Britain. I think we're meant to be ashamed of that. No, I think the <laughs> the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The dismantling of the British Empire was was the safest, less deaf most mutual beneficial dismantling of an empire ever. And it was so successful, many of those countries then said, can't we start something voluntarily and let's call yes. it the Commonwealth and let's all still be friends and do things together. Yes. That's how evil our empire was. Yeah, and that, that, that is, honestly, that is exactly the right way to put it. Like, you do not have a mutually beneficial Commonwealth of Nations that are on friendly terms for decades after the yeah. end of the empire. If... They, if the, the product of the empire was just purely negative. Where's the French Commonwealth? Well, that's a great question. Where's the uh, Portuguese and Spanish Commonwealth in South America? Do the Haitians really want to have a Commonwealth with France? Yeah. For anyone who knows anything about mm. the Haitian Revolution, well, it wasn't pretty. No. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and Britain voluntarily decolonized. And so this uh, is not only not a, a, a point of shame, in my opinion, this is a win. Um, yeah, you're welcome, world. Uh, then you get the absolute clowns. You get people like this, like anti-monarchist shout arrested after shouting, who elected him? It's like, mate, you're a Monty Python character. You're actually a character in a Monty Python skit. <laughs> he is, but again, he shouldn't be arrested for that. No, of course not. He don't. He, we always have fools, and there's fools in mm -hmm. every society, in yep. every community. And if he wants to be a fool and shout that, yep. then he takes that risk himself with the crowd. Yep. But uh, he shouldn't be arrested because, again, our police, again, overstep the mark all the time now. Well, yeah, I was going to get into that. Um, so, yeah, th this guy, an actual clown from a Monty Python skit. Uh, and also, you know, people elected Hitler, so calm down about being like, yep. elections are so great. Uh, you know. They elected Trump. They elected and I bet Trump. He doesn't yeah, like they, Trump. Yeah. You know, and they, they, it looks like in Italy and Sweden, they're going to be electing more right wingers. So yes. calm down about those elections, buddy. You know, like King Charles is a deep environmentalist, is he not? You know, gives lots of money, does lots of charitable things, blah, blah, blah. You know, calm down there. But, um, but anyway, so going on to that. Um, I meant to take out this John Oliver link, but he, John Oliver uh, made jokes about the Queen's death, and so that was cut from UK showing. But I, you know, he's not funny, so I don't know why they'd broadcast him at all. But um, but this is the thing, isn't it? Who wanted the offence laws? The left. There we go. Because at that moment in time, it suited them, yep. and that's what always happens when you want a sword for justice. Yep. You always forget swords have two sides, two cutting edges, yep. and it can be used on you just as easily when the tables turn. And that's why I have absolutely no sympathy for uh, for this barrister who held up a blank piece of paper near the House of Parliament and was told that he risked, risked being arrested if he wrote, not my king on it. It's like, not my problem, mate. Not my problem at all. Like, there was a guy in Scotland who had written Islam is questionable on a wall. Mm. And he got arrested for this. It's like, right, Islam is questionable. No, that's... That's offensive. Everything is questionable. Ex well, I would have thought so. <laughs> Everything. You know, and I, I don't think these guys should be arrested, but then I don't think we should have offence laws. No. Because I'm an old-fashioned Englishman like that. And this is one step further on than that. This is minority report. This is, I think you may write on that paper, yep. then hold it up. Yeah. So what's next? You have a pen in your pocket. It's, where does this start? Exactly. Can, can we agree with the leftists now who would like to be offensive during the the transition to the new king 
Can, can we agree that we need to get rid of these offence laws? Everything is offensive to somebody. Exactly. Everything is. Exactly. And so you just have to get over it. It's actually your own personal method of dealing with it that's important. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, three arrests at least have been made on suspicion of breach of the peace and public or offences uh, because of uh, anti-monarchical sentiment. It's like, okay, well, I, I don't think you should go to jail. Uh, I don't think you should be arrested. But I don't think people should be arrested for things they say on Twitter either. Hmm. So, you know, you made the bed, get effed in it. The, incidentally, the, there was a, a really funny event that happened in uh, Mecca over this. Mm. <laughs> a, a Yemeni man uh, published a video clip of himself on social media at the Grand Mosque in Mecca, uh, where mo- non-Muslims are forbidden, uh, holding up a banner saying, Umrah for the soul of Queen Elizabeth II, we ask God to accept her in heaven among the righteous. He got arrested for that. <laughs> Is this the same story or is this a different one where the man at Mecca was arrested for saying he's done his pilgrimage in honour of the Queen? No, this is, I, I'm not familiar with that one. This, in this particular one, he specifically um, had a, a banner and he videoed himself doing it. So, um, you know, but I mean, that's... that's well, we, we don't hold the Saudis to any sort of no, but standard, that, do we? But that's the point. Our... Offence laws have put us in the same box as the Saudis. Yeah. We are actually arresting people for the same reasons that the Saudis would do. And that if that's not a wake-up call to the Conservatives to say, well, hang on a second, maybe we should get rid of the Communications Act of 2003, particularly Section 127, which is how, and, and any other breach of the peace, like, you know, offence laws that we've got in the books, maybe if we should get rid of these. That would be a good idea so people could have a bit of free speech in public. Mm. Uh, anyway, let, moving on, let's, uh, The Guardian published this particular view on the Parliament. The, the Parliament shouldn't bend the knee to the monarchy. It's like, the Parliament can do anything it wants, actually. So why do you need to sort of, like, start bigging up the Parliament? Being like, this, is this the time? But that's the thing. I noticed that this, again, just has no teeth. Right? There's no force behind this. They, they can't, like, I mean, listen to this from the end, right? Who is the head of state does not matter. Birthright is not the right way to choose one. Parliament is the place to decide where, whether Britain needs a slimmed down monarchy or not one at all. Uh, this is an appeal to the uh, to a uh, the, there is an appeal to a sovereign to stand above the frame. The modern age of political populism, but MPs should not bend the knee before inheritance and rank. Modern Britain has little need for trappings and privileges that belong to another age. It just feels empty, doesn't it? Two quick points. The first point is these are the same people who want unelected citizens' assemblies. Oh yes, so, and, and they love the bureaucracy as well. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so they don't mean what they say there. Yeah. And B, if you if you are an MP, you have to place your trust and your obedience to the monarch because head of state. How can you have members of parliament who have who have not shown their fealty to the head of state? Mm. It just wouldn't make any sense. Because then that person then is not head of state of the whole country, only the head of state for the people who support yeah. the head of state. And then that's not head of state, is it? Yeah. Whose parliament are you a member of? Yeah. You know, it's the king's parliament. You know, that's the whole the whole point. Um, but the point is, you know, they're, they're like, oh, we modern Britain has little need for the trappings and privileges that belong to another age. It's like, I don't see that at all. You know, what I see are literally millions of people who are suddenly moved by the ancient trappings who are living in modern Britain and saying, no, I actually, I don't really like modern Britain. I actually like the ancient trappings and the ceremony and the, the structure that's built up around that. You know, the, this, this Guardian editorial, this, this position, it just felt like it was totally out of touch with the, the spirit of what's currently going on. You know, like literally huge numbers of people being moved by this. And they're just like, yeah, no one needs this. Now, nah, I, I think it does. Actually. Because it's our history. It all means something. Yeah. We may not understand what any of it means, most people, but some people understand what some of it means. Yeah. But it's our tradition. It, yeah. It's where we came from. It's how we've got to where we are. Yeah, it's our story. Through following, that's it. It's our story. Yeah. And that's the thing. Stories are so important. And in fact, I've got a great story that uh, will come to uh, nearly an end on this. Uh, so you're aware of Afua Hirsch? She, she annoys me all the time. <laughs> the, it's, the, it's hard to find <clears throat> someone who's more anti-British than Afua Hirsch. And of course, so you know, she moved to Africa for a couple of years and then got assaulted, got robbed, yeah. got sexually assaulted, came back and said, oh, I'm not too keen on Africa. Yeah, I know. And it was specifically Ghana where her, her mother was from. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and uh, there's a, she's got a story from her time in Ghana that's pertinent now. Right. Yeah. She says, I will never forget visiting Independence Arch in Ghana. 
that this was the nation proud to have been the first black African people to successfully break free from empire. And here was the first physical focal point of that freedom, an archway bearing a symbolic black star. When I looked inside, I found a reality check. A plaque dedicated this freedom to none other than Queen Elizabeth II. Just owned from beyond the grave. <laughs> because the British Empire and the Queen were not hated. No, they weren't. They're like, thank you for decolonizing Queen. Yes. And they put up a plaque to her. And Afro Hirsch has got has spent her entire life demonizing Britain and the monarchy and gets there and realizes that the actual people from Ghana like the Queen. And they put up a thing saying, thank you. In, in in honor of Queen Elizabeth. And she just sat there like, I can't believe it. And so she's like, I understood it as a lesson that even in our freedom, we are not free. Oh, God, give it up. You know, what more do you want? What could we possibly give you? There's, there's you no know? changing minds of people like no, that. No. It's a bit like when you left home as a 17, 18, 20 year old, yeah. you then automatically hate your dad because he was a tyrant who ran your yeah, household no, and now you've broken free. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. No, no. no. It's in it. And that's, as you say, that's you know, this, this, this plaque here that she is being destroyed by in her own article is exactly the proof that you need. Hmm. You know, Oh, we were the first black African people to successfully break free. And then we put up a little plaque saying, we love you. Thank you. Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Let's stay friends. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't yeah. make sense. We're still connected yeah. historically. We want to be connected in the future. Yeah. And let's carry on. And no, she she wants that country to hate the UK, exactly. and they don't exactly. But she does hate that country because, as you said, you know, when she went there, she got robbed and sexually assaulted. And was oh my god, I can't live here. I've got to live in London. Well, she thought she was going to be their version of a female Gandhi or Mandela. Yes, welcome home, our lost sister. Your trials and tribulations. Tell us your stories. You're you're with your people now. I I did a segment on this actually a while ago because uh, in about she, in 2012 she'd come back and. Be like, I can't live in Africa. Hmm. So, oh, where are you going to live then, Afua? Oh, you're going to live in England, aren't you? Hear them moan about it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And be paid to moan about it day yeah. after day. Because we'll accept you moaning yeah, about exactly. it. exactly. Most countries won't accept that. Exactly. Ex exactly right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so, and what's funny, she ends this by saying, if it were possible to set all of this to one side, as in all of her hatred and demonization of Britain, maybe I would like to mourn the Queen. It's like, well, then you could, actually. You could get over yourself and actually mourn the Queen. Because, but she's going, oh, I can't separate her from a reign that refused to acknowledge the reality of my lies. Uh, and she, but it's ironic because both of her grandfathers fled to Britain to escape tyrannical regimes. Like her, her grandfather from Ghana fled because he was being persecuted by the King of Ghana, whoever mm -hmm. it was. And uh, her other grandfather was Jewish who fled from the Nazis. And they both fled to London. It's like, yeah, that's because that's where people go when they don't want what to. What she's change. missing is some gratitude to this country. Yes, indeed. Yeah, just that's exactly pure, right. old, simple gratitude. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, just the, the final hater I figure we'll go for here Kendi Andrews. I don't mourn the Queen. Of course you don't, Kendi. You can't. You spent your entire life demonizing huh. this country. You, and the Queen, of course, is white. I mean, he, he calls her the number one symbol of white supremacy. Is, oh, God, Kendi. Give it up, mate. You know, this, no one is interested in hearing about your view of this anymore. Um, Unfortunately, some people are, though. Well, I mean, there are, but, like, this has not been... I, I just don't see this being the focal point of the conversation now. You know? I hope not. I hope, that, I hope this, with the Queen's passing, mm. I hope this now changes mm. the nation I hope people now start rejecting some of this and calling this out mm. and instead of sitting there quiet going i'll listen to you talk rubbish because i'm not that interested yeah instead of doing that going no mm. you're talking rubbish i'm not having speaking about the queen like that or the country like that and that's what it needs it needs people getting a bit of a backbone and the silent majority stop being so silent well if we go to uh the next one you you'll hear that this is uh an uptick in racism and if you can go to the next one, in fact, the Independent are like, oh my God, the Queen's death has unleashed a torrent of racist abuse. No, not having that at all. Exactly. Not having it. What she means is the Queen's death has unleashed a sense of Britishness and people are talking about being British and are pulling people like her when she's being anti-British. That's what she means. That's exactly right. And uh, they are very, very upset by that.